now at 3.30, outrage from the family members of the victim after a woman who stabbed a man to death is sentenced to probation. Bryn Spacer was convicted of involuntary manslaughter just last month. She claims to have been under a marijuana-induced psychosis when she killed a man she had been dating. All right, let's just jump into it. Honestly, I think we should just discuss it. I think I have a very unique perspective on weed-induced psychosis because, as you guys know, one of my friends experienced it a few years back, and it was like a life-changing experience. As a avid weed smoker myself and as somebody who's been dabbling in weed since she was like 28, so I'm a late starter. I'm 34 now. I am a big fan and proponent of weed, but I also understand that we're still learning so much about it. And specifically, we're learning so much about the new type of weed that people are interacting with. So as somebody who has someone in her life who she witnessed in weed-induced psychosis, and as somebody who did not believe it when it was happening, not even my friend who had it occur to them, even they were in denial that it was weed related, but all the doctors were like, this is weed related. And we were all like, there's no way weed doesn't do this. News, weed does it. Even Joe Rogan's talked about it. Philip DeFranco's covered it. Lots of people are talking about it. So I talked to my friend before I came live and they are willing to do an interview about their weed induced psychosis. You know, not for this live stream, but for a podcast we'll work on. We want questions and we want what you guys, I guess, maybe some of your thoughts about it, maybe some of your criticisms about it, maybe some of your doubts about it. I would like for them to tell their story. I think for them, it feels very important for people to be aware that it could happen to anyone. And I, I would love for their story to be shared. I'll keep their, you know, face private for the interview just because like they have a real person job. <laughs> but it really happened and it was incredibly difficult. Like, I don't even know how to explain it to you. So from my perspective, I'm pretty emotional when I talk about it. Um, because I don't know where they would have been if they didn't have their family and they didn't have me and they didn't have people in their life who was there for them. So we're going to watch this story today about a woman who received probation and the stabbing of a man she was dating because a lot of people, I think if you don't understand psychosis, will not see her as the victim that she is. But nobody smokes weed and thinks I'm going to hit psychosis. Nobody smokes weed and think anything bad is going to happen to you because for decades, rightfully so, 420 advocates have been saying there are little to no consequences to smoking weed. And conservatives have said there's horrible consequences to smoking weed and everybody's just so bubbled about how they talk about it that I just want to add one more voice into the mix here. But obviously it's more nuanced, right? It's so much more nuanced than the conversations that are being had in, in regards to this. And since I'm such a big proponent of like mental health advocacy, I just want to remind people that if we had better resources in the States for people under psychosis, we wouldn't see as much violence. They've already done studies that around the world, people who experience psychosis or schizophrenia are not exhibiting violent behavior the way they do in America. America is specifically such a violent environment that mentally ill people tend to be violent, not because of their mental illnesses, but because of the environment that is America. And so again, I need us to be open-minded that America is even more to maybe blame, I don't, you know, that's an interesting word to use, than even the psychosis itself. But psychosis means, right, a deviation from reality. They are not in reality. Now, with that said, my friend, as an example, has no underlining mental issues, no schizophrenia, no bipolar, no anything wrong with them. After they ended up coming out of their psychosis, they ended up going right back into adult life, right? So they're functional, they live their life, they have their whole... Um, everything's back in order to say, right? So they ended up never getting diagnosed with anything else. So I saw a lot of people say like, oh, this only happens to people with bipolar or schizophrenia, but like, that's not even true because my friend doesn't have any of those things. The doctors checked, trust me, we all made sure to check. And they saw so many doctors, many therapists. We made sure they were like completely back on track. You know what I mean? And they were fine. They did not get diagnosed with any of those things. So again, I think this really could happen to quote anyone, but it's not even that. I think we need to do more study into maybe what types of brains end up having this relationship with the weed and what are we putting into our weed, you know, and how are you consuming that weed? Is it edible? Is it vape? Is it bong? Is it, you know, 
where are you getting your, you know, your weed from? Who's giving it to you? And so I think that's a big part of it as well. You know, I make a joke that like cocaine used to be safe. But the joke of that is like I've had cousins die from fentanyl overdose with cocaine and they shouldn't have died from cocaine. I've had other people use coke their whole life and they're very functional and they certainly didn't overdose because they're not getting laced fentanyl cocaine. So I think a lot of what's going into this is that we're dealing with unnaturally messed with THC. Okay, we're getting unnaturally messed with laced with fentanyl cocaine. We are demonizing people who use drugs instead of recognizing you could have healthier relationships with porn, drugs, sex, alcohol, if we taught a little bit more introspection and philosophy and all of these things, you know. And so, again, there's so much that needs there's just the story is so layered. And I just know I've already listened to people talk about it. They're never going to have the nuanced take if they have such a black and white perspective on what is weed, what is drug use, what is psychosis, what is mental health. If you, you know, if you're going into this story with black and white thinking, then you're just going to see like you're not going to see the victim that this woman is. When you are undergoing psychosis, you are a victim of your own mental health. Now, of course, I understand that even under psychosis, your body does things that could lead to, you know, in this case, murder or in this case, I'm sorry, a death. I should say a death. And I can understand wanting some sort of justice for that. But I think in a truly just world, I think the woman got the right sentencing, which is probation. And I think that I understand that somebody is dead now, but in reverse, it could have happened to him. And I think it would have been just as justified for him to get probation. We don't, she did not smoke weed that night thinking she would undergo psychosis, right? So if it had happened to him, I still think it would have been justified for him to get probation. The only difference is that it didn't happen to him. It happened to her. So now she has to live with the fact that she did this, doesn't even remember doing it or have any real understanding of why she did it. And on top of that, the world will demonize her without even understanding that like psychosis, you don't know the difference and it could happen to any of us. And so for me, it's, you know, I think a lot of compassion is needed here. Like a lot of compassion for everyone involved, for the gentleman's family, for her, for her family, for her, like everybody involved. And what do you do if it happens to someone you love? And as somebody who had it happen to somebody I love, I am just grateful that their family had the resources, patient, under patience and understanding, and that they were willing to get them help. Because if my friend didn't have that from their family, they could have ended up homeless. They could have ended up dead. They could have ended up alone. Like, it just would have ended up so bad. Like we're so lucky that my friend's family was willing to recognize that their child was going through a weed-induced psychosis. Like we're so lucky. And this, like the world isn't prepared to have this conversation just yet. I mean, they're barely prepared to talk about mental health in general, um, let alone like any compassion when it comes to drug use. I know a lot of people want to throw her away, want to throw her in jail, but I just think that is so cruel. Stabbing their loved one over 100 times in a marijuana-induced psychosis is sentenced. The judge today mm. giving the defendant two years felony probation, not prison time. Mm. No cameras in the courtroom, but reaction outside. How I felt was it's just an unjust determination family of slain you know in an ideal world i would love for families be able to be able to give the sentences out to people i think i fantasize about this sometimes because i think they would be just but they wouldn't their whole emotions are heightened they're not fair they're not thinking with compassion or empathy because they're upset which is reasonable but i do think it is you know to point to a sick person and say like you did this so you're at fault is very interesting and again i don't believe in punishment i believe in rehabilitation so obviously it's not that she should, you know, but we didn't do psychosis as temporary. So that's the problem too, is you want to hold her accountable for things she didn't sign up for, for a thing that happened to her. And on top of that, it's temporary. So she's not even um, a threat to society afterwards. So again, I think it would be better for a, a just system to give this woman probation, maybe some rehabilitation of some kind. But to throw the book at her, to throw her in prison for life, any of that stuff, I just think is so beyond cruel and you're only thinking with your feelings, which I understand, right? But still.
Thousand Oaks 26 year old accountant Chad Amelia devastated today after his convicted killer, 32 year old Bryn Spacer, who's been out on bail since the 2018 slaying, was sentenced today and given no time behind bars. It's been five and a half years where she has got to live with her family and we get to live with a box of ashes. Last yeah, but just a reminder she stabbed herself, she stabbed him, and she stabbed a dog because psychosis makes you think something is happening that isn't. It makes you hear voices that tell you, if you don't kill them, I might kill your whole family. It depends on the victim, right? For my friend, just a little bit of a, a, a tidbit into their story, the voices would say to them, like, if you don't kill someone, we're gonna murder your whole family. And they would see things and hear things and really believe, like truly believe, like if you don't fucking do this, bro, if you don't kill yourself, we're gonna murder your whole family. And they'd be like, oh my God, I have to do this. And thank God we would tell them like, dude, you're just in a bad trip. You're totally fine. And they'd be like, okay. And I'd be like, look, you're, you're fine, dude. And like, that was the problem is that if no one is there to tell you, if no one is prepared for this, she might've fully 1000% felt like it was absolutely real and, or like a dream and under, and, and made this decision for a reason. We don't, I don't know what the voices were telling her. I don't know what she was seeing. So again, like you're, I know you're upset you're not with your family mem member anymore, but as somebody who had a family member who, thank God, was, in their words, too pussy to follow through with what the voices wanted, <laughs> I really, you know, we're really lucky that my friend didn't die. We're really lucky that they didn't hurt anybody. We're really lucky they didn't hurt themselves, even though they tried, you know, they really tried while they were under psychosis and we would have to like sleep with them and hold them down. And somebody would always be on watch with them because they were like throwing themselves on the floor, trying to crack open their head, which by the way, if you've never heard a skull hit the concrete floor, it is the worst sound I have ever heard in my life. And I have heard it multiple times at this point. And again, like we had doctors involved, we had the authorities involved, we had our community involved in helping this person. And it is a devastating process when you don't have the resources. And that's what I'm trying to say is have compassion for the person that literally left the planet and thought it was real. Have compassion for the person that has to live with themselves also knowing they did this. Have compassion for the fact that this person did not sign up for this. They went in thinking they were having a great night with a guy they were dating, thinking they were having a great moment with weed. Think of every time you've seen Snoop Dogg or Martha Stewart or any of your favorite celebrities smoke weed. Think of every time you've seen Joe Rogan. Think of every time it's gone right for somebody else and for her it went terribly wrong. Think about every time you've seen it in music videos, you've seen it in your own party life, you've smoked that fucking doobie, you've had a great time hitting that bong, you've enjoyed that vape and think, Thank God it didn't fucking happen to me, bro. Like, thank God, out of all the statistical probabilities, I wasn't one of them because it fucking happened to this woman. And now she gets to live with the fact that she stabbed herself, stabbed a guy she was dating, stabbed a dog, and people want her in prison for the rest of her life for something she didn't sign up for. She didn't sign up for this. None of us, when we hit the bong, are signing up for this. None of us. My friend didn't sign up for it when they were smoking a vape a perfectly legal vape that they got from a legal dispensary, right? This is legal drugs coming from the legal dispensaries that can cause this. So again, nobody signs up for this. So we have to have so much compassion for the fact that it could be any of us, bro. Same way any of us could end up getting dementia while we're driving and realizing like, oh, we didn't take care of our brains. And then we've you know, driven off the road, the same way one of our elderly people could do it, the same way one of us could have a stroke, the same way like every single one of us just existing could end up having a health crisis that could lead us down a path of doing something horrible to somebody else. Now, again, I'm not saying that it's okay or we should ignore the fact that it happened, but I'm saying in this situation, same with like postpartum depression or anything of those, like anything like that, we as a community, as a society, as America, I'll use America as an example, we don't do the research. We're not compassionate. We're not thinking this could happen to us. Every woman that has a baby is not thinking I'm going to murder my children. And then when she does, because she's experiencing such a chemical mishap, a complete devastating relationship with her brain and what's happening, she's seen as this like cruel and horrible person until it happens to somebody we know or it happens to ourselves. And that's what I'm asking for the world to consider is what if it happens to you and what are you going to do about it? Are you going to throw somebody in prison? Or are you going to give them a place to rehabilitate themselves, a place to get better, an opportunity to become a part of society again? Or 
Are you going to, you know, really lock them away and torture them for being a person who's a victim of, of something that's bound to happen to somebody you know? Last month, the jury found Spacer guilty of involuntary manslaughter, of stabbing Amelia, a man she'd been dating a few weeks, 108 times with three different knives, while in the throes of a marijuana-induced psychosis. These are things everyone agrees on. What we don't agree on is that she should have walked free today after doing what she did. It's very. But why? What's the, why not? Why not? Like, I want to know why can't she walk free? Because I, that's what I want to know. Like, what are you putting her in prison for? Right? Like, why? Is she a danger to society? Well, not really. Not unless, you know, she smokes weed again. And maybe not even, right? So what, what are you putting her in prison? Who are you protecting her from? Sad day for victims of crime. And I don't believe in punishment, so putting her, you know, in prison doesn't make sense to me. Very sad day for this family. At the scene of the killing, officers reported finding Amelia dead and Spacer screaming hysterically, still holding the knife, stabbing herself in the neck. Spacer faced up to four years in prison. Plus, So she also stabbed herself. She's not a murderer and she didn't sign up for this. Sentencing enhancements. The judge saying given... She took a life. Taking a life doesn't mean anything. You have to... Like, you need to put that into context. We justify taking lives all the time through the means of the legal government. We don't actually have a problem with taking a life, right? In the facts of the case, he didn't think it was warranted. He took into account her lack of criminal record, her professional standing in the community, and that she did, in fact, suffer from severe psychosis at the time of the killing and really did not know what she was doing. The judge citing evidence and expert testimony, also saying it proves Spacer did not know marijuana would have this effect on her when she smoked with Amelia. I mean, most people don't because it's not going to. For most people, it's not going to cause psychosis, right? Um, it's not her boyfriend. It was the guy she was dating, but her boyfriend is gone forever. But her, but it doesn't, I don't, so? Like, I again, I don't know what that means. Again, I think that's too much in people's feelings. He didn't. Okay. Again, if my friend stabbed me because they were in psychosis, I would, and I died, I would not want them to go to prison because my friend didn't mean to kill me. Do, do you hear what I'm saying? I would, as a person, I would never want my friend who was in psychosis to be put in prison because they killed me. There's, I could, I would never be so cruel. I would never be so sociopathic as to do that to them. I would never want that to happen. Because again, I know what mental health means. I know what psychosis means. I would never want that to happen, right? So why do you want it to happen? Why would you want this to happen to your brother, your, your mother, somebody you know, someone who's close to you? They are being victimized by a drug-induced psychosis and you want them to be punished for being a victim of something that didn't actually have, like they didn't even mean to do, right? At his apartment that night, the victim's family concerned about a broader impact. I think he set an absolute terrible precedent in the state of California where it, it's, it's okay to kill somebody after you smoke marijuana. Does it set a precedent? I don't know if it does, but it's certainly a case that defense counsels will cite when asking for probation mm. in a case like this. If Spacer violates her parole, the judge says she will get four years prison time. She does also have to do 100 hours community service. Bryn Spacer, her family and attorney did not speak after the sentencing and the... You don't seem to understand that a lot of people don't understand why she wasn't put in a facility for this because you don't understand psychosis. It's not permanent for all people. Like I said, my friend who underwent weed-related psychosis, we need to do psychosis, is perfectly healthy now. No schizophrenia, no bipolar, no leading issues, absolutely a functional part of society again. So you saying they should be locked up in a facility, why? It, they're not a danger to society or themselves anymore. They're literally not a danger. It's a drug-induced psychosis that causes possible violent outbursts and if you're lucky, you get out of it without hurting yourself or other people. But in this case, she wasn't lucky and she hurt somebody, probably because the psychosis was telling her to, obviously, right? She's not a danger to society. That's why it wouldn't make sense to put her in a facility. It just wouldn't make sense. 
the attorney has not returned my call either. The defendant did address the judge today, though, very tearful, begging for forgiveness, saying she will spend her life doing good for Guys, I, I know that you're worried, but I'm telling you right now, the science shows she's not a danger in the same way. Matt says, I'm sorry, but if this was me, I wouldn't be okay with walking away a free man. I think that's the wrong way to view your limited life on earth. I think that is the wrong way to view how limited life is on earth. It is very limited, right? She had a good record, a good standing in the community, right? And every individual case will be individual. That's why we have to get good doctors without bias helping people like this, right? I don't know why your moral compass is saying you should imprison somebody who was a victim of a, a total brain chemistry mishap, right? Like, why do you think that? You know, does her probation um, need to be sober and avoid weed? I assume because it's a felony offense. I assume so, right? She had zero history of problems and good standing in the community. I'm asking you guys to actually think of compassion, meaning to suffer with don't self-punish yourself. Don't punish yourself for being a victim, right? Ask yourself, do we want to live in a society that punishes people in this situation or do we want to rehabilit rehabil rehabilitate and help? If that's the case, she's done her time and she's ready to be back in society. Why would you need to be forever in a facility if you did one thing wrong? If you drunk drove once and that's a different situation that people choose to drink and drive, right? But even if you did that, and you did your time, you'd be able to come out, right? Like, of course, psychosis in this case, not all cases, is temporary. And she's out of it now. So, of course, she can start becoming a part of society again, right? So why do you think people um, seek out punishment other than their own biases or traumas? Like, what's the logical conclusion of that, right? What's the logical conclusion? Brothers. That's the latest in the newsroom, Lou. I'll send it back to you. Okay, okay. So we're done with that video. And again, like America is a punishment system. We punish people, which is why the world sucks. And you know what's worse is you're going to throw her behind bars if people get their way and you're not even going to give her a way out. She's not allowed to kill herself, but the state can kill her if they decide her life is meaningless. We justify killing people all the time. And you certainly aren't in psychosis when you do it. So the question is, why do you think we can justify killing people? But when someone does it in psychosis, they're always guilty versus seeing them as a victim. We will literally justify the government killing people. We will justify, in so many ways, our, our own selves killing people because, oh, they hurt my kid or they did this. The moment someone's in psychosis, which is weed-induced, so temporary in this situation, she's not allowed to have the same sort of like understanding of why she did what she did. Isn't that interesting? We will understand self-defense sober, but we won't understand psychosis-induced. Don't you think that's interesting? Because that's the issue, right, that I'm seeing with this story. Fishy says, the description of what happened is so horrifying. I can't imagine how I'd come out of it if I was in her position. Well, she's going to have to live with that for the rest of her life, which sucks. I don't think any of us could handle that the way this woman's going to have to face herself, right? Kay says, I don't think people actually believe in psychosis, which is why they can't add the nuance to such a case. Yeah, honestly, I never thought weed psychosis was real until my friend had it experienced. And then it totally shifted my whole perception, right? I've experienced psychosis. It's a literal break from reality. Yeah, it absolutely is. And I don't think you should be punished because of it, right? Can we prove after the fact that it was psychosis? Um, well, that's a doctor diagnosis, right? Like my friend got diagnosed. She saw specialists like it was a whole thing. So um, I don't I assume this is what that woman had to do, right? Like it's a doctor di diagnosed. When the doctors first diagnosed my friend, I was like, you're wrong. We doesn't cause psychosis. This has to be wrong. It has to be bipolar or schizophrenia. I thought it was worse. And they're like, Brittany, it's it's weed. I was like, there's no fucking way. And it was true. It was true. My friend got on anti-psych meds for a little while, then got off of them, and it's perfectly fine, a perfectly like, normal part of society now. You would never have known it. Looking at them, you would never guess that was their story, right? They're college educated. They're functional in the world. They have a real adult job. People rely on them every day. And this fully happened to them. The only reason my friend didn't kill anyone was one, their family came and got them and took care of them, had the money to get them doctors and medication, gave them a place to stay. And um, they, for, for some reason, when the voices told them to do things, they were like, nah, I'd rather, I'm not doing anything. And they like, they quote, pussied out. 
And that's interesting to me because I think there's something to be said about this, right? Like the experience you're going to have is dictated on so many environmental factors. So I'm just trying to say it would be nice if society learned to be less cruel and reactionary to moments like this. But I know I'm asking too much of people, right? Because humans are going to human, um, you know, um, infallible foul because it's too easy to pretend you blacked out. It's not. Psychosis is I knew my friend was different because of the way they were talking. I knew right away something was different about my friend. They don't sound reasonable. They are in psychosis. They talk about hearing voices. They're literally slamming their head against the wall. Guys, they're not passed out. Psychosis, you're awake. You're not passed out. You're not sleeping. When my friend underwent weed induced psychosis, they couldn't even sleep. They have like, they weren't sleeping. You're not passed out. You can't pretend you're in psychosis. It is a very specific, like the way they look at you, the way they talk to you. And I know because when I was with my friend and her family, there was a moment where she broke and she came back to reality and she looked at us and she's like, what are you doing? And I was like, can you understand me? And I burst into tears because I was like, oh my God, it's you. Like the version of my friend that came to I was like, oh my God, it's you. And then she slipped right back into psychosis. And I was like, fuck. So as a person who knows somebody, if you know your friends or family, you know the version of them that's like coherent and reasonable and thoughtful and grounded. And then the version of them that isn't. It's like dementia or Alzheimer's or being drunk sometimes. If you know somebody, you know when they're off. So you can't fake psychosis in the way that you're thinking of it, right? You're thinking of psychosis as like a big game. They literally lose touch with the reality. So when you're interacting with them, you're like, something's really off, like specifically off. And so it's not so simple as saying like, oh, I'd be able to tell. Like you would think so, but it as somebody who experienced it, like as a friend, you don't know what it is at first. And it's so scary because you think, oh my God, like they're really hearing and seeing things that aren't there. You know, it's very scary. Um, Biza says plenty of murderers have tried to use psychosis defense. And when they fake it, it's clear enough for investigators and doctors. Truly, truly. Discord says, I feel like what people overlook, having to live with the burden of knowing you did that, did that is punishment itself for people. I agree. I really do. She's going to have to live with this for the rest of her life for something she didn't even pick. Imagine if she just didn't smoke weed that day. Guys, think about it. Think about the nuance of that. If I just didn't smoke weed today. Can you believe that? How many of us so casually smoke weed? How many of us take an edible, go to parties, get drunk? And all this, if this woman just didn't, if this boy, if this guy didn't give her weed that day, he wouldn't be dead. She wouldn't be, she wouldn't have been a murderer. Can you believe it? If she just, if she just skipped, if she just got a flat tire that day, or if she just, you know, decided not to go on the date, or if he didn't decide to, you know what I mean? If they just, didn't smoke that day. But they did. Like every normal common weed smoker does. They just fucking hit that bong. Thought they were going to veg out to anime or whatever they're doing for the day. And bam, she stabbed him, stabbed herself, stabbed a dog. It's fucking sad. It's fucking sad, bro. <sighs> Hayda says you can see psychosis in a person's eyes. It's not something you can pretend. You can't fake psychosis, bros. I'm sorry. You just can't, you know? Cherry says, this is uh, one of the reasons I will never smoke weed. I'm too scared, uh, but uh, that it will affect me badly one day. Yeah, you know, it kills me because I, you know, I don't want to deny people the ability to take a drug that has been so pain relieving for so many of us or so important for so many of us. And I don't want conservatives or people to run with this, the anti-drug people. I don't want them to run with this and say, see, I told you, excuse me, I told you drugs are bad. Like, Weed is bad. It's not even weed. It's the weed we're smoking. It's once the government got their hands on it and pushed it into dispensaries and these dispensaries played with it and made it into something different. Like we have to talk about that. And we have to talk about how even normal untouched weed could also possibly do this to certain people because of the chemistry in your brain. You know, there's so much that goes into this. So again, I just don't want people... I want, I want to give people tools. Again, I'm not asking anything of humanity. Humanity has proven time and time again it is cruel and ruthless and doesn't give a fuck about people, okay? So I'm not even asking that of humanity. I'm just asking it of those of you who want the tool to understand that it is not black and white. Now, 
Does anyone have questions for my friend when I interview them for the podcast about their experience of weed-induced psychosis? Do you have any questions for my friend? Because I would love to interview them. They already consented. You know, of course, they can revoke that consent as we come up on the date. But assuming they still consent, I would love for you guys to hear it from somebody who really experienced it and was able to get out of it without permanently hurting themselves or other people because they had friends and family and and enough status in society to get the care they needed from doctors. So I would love your questions. Please let me know what you want to hear from them. Let me know what you're interested in learning from them because my friend is college educated. They have a really good job in society. People rely on them every day. You would never know looking at them that this happened to them. And I'm just so grateful. I'm so grateful it makes me want to cry that my friend got out of it without any of this happening to them. They're so lucky, bro. They're so lucky. They had so they, so much luck, you know, was on their side. Lindsay says, I'm really worried about kids getting access to weed early. Now that it's sold at a, uh, uh, sold at a reservation near me. Mind you, I always found it, uh, even if there wasn't accessibility from the res. You know, can I tell you, I didn't smoke till I was 28. And to be honest with you, I kind of think that has to do with it. I don't have bad experiences on weed, but I think honestly, um, I wonder, I have to ask my friend how old were they when they started smoking, um, but I have a theory. I wonder if you start smoking under 25, if it changes things, because I, I really didn't smoke until I was 28, So I and I didn't even smoke that much until I was like 29, really. Um, great questions. Thank you guys so much. I'm writing these down. I'm so, I'm yeah, I'm really grateful my friend reached out and said they want to, they think they would like to advocate um, cause it, you know, is a transformational experience, right? Um, just having it happen. And then even their friends and their family, like so many people gathered to come see them and support them and try to be there for them. Like think about having a whole community that comes together, their job, their coworkers, so many people came around them, um, and understood the situation. But imagine if you have a community that doesn't. Imagine if you have a community that wants revenge. Imagine if you have a community that wants you to suffer even more. Like imagine, you know what I mean? But I am concerned about kids getting access to weed. I am. I'm. It's going to happen again, right? Um, okay, thank you, Discord, for also sending questions. I see you guys. I will write them down. I have a doc going right now. It's just so sad, you know. Lindsay says, I just worry kids' brains aren't fully developed and they start smoking weed and possibly getting psychosis. I'm terrified, bro. And I don't think we need to make weed illegal. I think we need to be more aware that if psychosis happens, everybody stay calm and everyone give that person space to be safe. But it obviously like is one of those things where we're not trained in mental health. We're just not. And when weed advocate, okay, the 420 advocates also got to get their shit together because a lot of them are in such denial that weed can do this. And I don't blame them. I was too. I didn't want to believe it. My friend didn't want to believe it. None of us wanted to believe it. But it's clear that it happens to some people, you know? It is really clear. So it's just one of those things. It's one of those things. Oh, it's so, it's debit. Like, this is just a devastating story to me. I'm so sad. I'm not going to lie. I, oh, it's just, it's a lot to, it's a lot to realize like this could happen to somebody you love. And, um, like, I just couldn't even imagine locking, like my friend getting locked up for this. Like I would be so, I wouldn't, again, and maybe this is just me speaking from my perspective of bubbles and realizing like we're evolved animals on a planet and my belief in like science and everything. But truthfully, like it could happen to any of us. And if it if I was the one murdered, I just would not want somebody to go to prison for that. I just can't. I can't justify it. How could I justify sending them to prison for something they didn't even like? It was so it was so devastating to the person doing it. Like how could I justify that? Destroying their life because they destroyed a life unintentionally with no intention. Like I just I can't do that. And we do take these things into consideration in court because it is just. It is fair and balanced to take into account someone's mental state. We've done this time and time again, as we should, and that is a fair and just society is to take that into account. It is. Revenge is not good. Justice is not revenge. Justice is not revenge. People with bipolar don't hear voices. That's just FYI. Yeah, totally. Just FYI. I didn't mean to associate that too. I think I said bipolar schizophrenia, but like it was only because like we thought it was bipolar schizophrenia when my friend was going through it, but then we realized like, nope, 
this is psychosis. Like this is, this is too unique, you know? Cause I dated a girl with schizophrenia. It was fine. She was on meds. Um, I've known people with bipolar. It was quite life changing and devastating, both the schizophrenia and bipolar, but you get on meds, you regulate your life, you know? Lindsay says, I've seen someone in psychosis. It was extremely sad and also scary. They were up and down talking word salad. Everyone wanted to help her, but she wouldn't accept help. She's on the streets now. See? Oh my God. I'm sorry. Like mm -mm. the moment I knew something was weird with my friend, I like called her family. I was like, we have to do something. We have to do something. And we're so lucky that we could. You know what I mean? We like, we're so lucky we did do something. We're lucky. I'm lucky her family came together. Her community came together. Her job came together. Like I'm so, she's, she, I'm saying I'm so lucky, but she's so lucky as a friend or a family member of somebody who went through psychosis, like as somebody who's connected to somebody close, it also impacts the family. Like it impacts your family. It impacts the parents. It impacts the siblings or cousins or, well, it depends on who's involved. Uh, but it impacts the family. I think people forget that too, which I understand the stabbing victim. It impacted his family, obviously. But it also impacts your family. You know what I mean? It impacts everybody. Everybody because you're just like so relieved, right? Okay. Uh, Let me see. Did I get this question correct? Okay. Uh, What's the difference between schizophrenia and psychosis? Um, Well, I'm not a therapy or a mental health channel. But from my understanding, um schizophrenia guys correct me if i'm wrong fuck i don't know how to explain this is a genetic predisposition that gets triggered in your mid-20s often in women or men and then you have a mental mental illness versus psychosis is a temporary mental displacement is that the differences? Is that how you would explain it like psych like, oh psychosis is a symptom thank you marcy yes psychosis is a symptom it's not, it's not an illness in the same way, if that makes sense. We say, like even bipolar, uh, uh, borderline isn't a mental illness, but we, I call it that, but it's a personality disorder. It's mental health, but it's not a mental illness because it's a learned behavioral reaction um, to extreme stimuli, right? So it's not a mental illness by, by a borderline. So we misuse those words in layman society because we're all, we don't know what we're talking about. Yeah, Lindsay says, I'm finding you need to be able to advocate for yourself in a crisis to get help. It's insane. Personally, going through this, getting help is not easy. And I understand why people give up. Oh, yeah. Like if my friend didn't have a community, I wonder if they would have been homeless. I wonder if they would have just like driven their car into a ditch. Like I wonder where they would have been. You know what I mean? Which is so sad, bro. I really think most people who are homeless are going through a mental health crisis. There's no way you would choose to be homeless unless you are one of the few. Like there's always going to be a part of the homeless population that chooses to be there. But generally speaking, like I just, you cannot justify to me that a normal, rational human being would choose to be homeless, you know, living with sores in their own feces, doing drugs on the street. There's some point in which your brain isn't functioning in a rational or, re rational or reasonable way in an evolutionary sense. Like you're denying yourselves the basics, food, water, shelter, like you're denying yourself the basics. So my brain processes this as an extremely like it's obviously a mental health crisis um oh i searched earlier discord says and i learned even lupus can cause psychosis bro autoimmune disorders bro uh wizard says i had weed induced psychosis once on an edible and i was extremely paranoid i was telling um how we were all going to die climate change nuclear war i felt like it was losing i was losing it completely yeah my friend that's when i knew something was wrong with them um, but in particular, they had a thought of like, we're all going to die. Like there's a bomb's going to hit us. Like a bomb's going to hit us. And I remember like lying with them on um, their family's driveway and just like holding their hand. And they were like, it's coming. The bomb is coming. And I was like, and I remember crying. And they were just like, are you crying because the bomb is coming? And I was like, sis, nah, sis, girl, <laughs> nah, girl. <laughs> And it was like one of those things where I was like, shit, this is rough, bro. Like you're just looking at somebody. It's like, it's. have you ever talked to somebody with dementia or Alzheimer's? It kind of feels similar, but not really. Like where you look at them and you're like, huh, but they don't know. Like they don't know. And so your brain is just like, oh my God. Like, you know, listen, I, we make fun of conspiracy theorists. I see them. They're obviously having a misunderstanding with reality, but it's not the same thing. I think I have so much like compassion and love for people who suffer so greatly because I know 
it is so beyond any meme. It's so beyond any comprehension unless you've seen it. It transformed my life to witness psychosis. It transformed my life. And I realized how unprepared I was to handle it too. I did not handle it well. I was a very questionable friend during that process because I was great in some ways, but I was really bad in other ways, you know? Judy joined the memberships. Hello, Judy. Welcome, Judy. Does someone in psychosis always know they're in psychosis? Ooh, I'll ask my friend this. I don't even know. Um, No. No, they don't. That's the point. They don't know they're in psychosis. Wait, does someone in psychosis always know they are? No, they don't know they're in psychosis. That's the problem. They they feel like they feel like it's a dream, some of them, but they also feel like it like they're you and me. They feel like it's really real. And the voices will tell them things like, and I'm generalizing, you know, kill everybody now or the world's gonna end, or kill yourself or your family's gonna die, or they'll have horrible imagery or thoughts. So like they don't know they're in psychosis, right? Which is the point, I think. That's why we should be very compassionate and lenient on people going through it and get them the help they need, right? Ingrid says, my grandpa had dementia. We would be having a conversation. And he would say the exact same thing he said five minutes ago, like he hadn't said it already. It was really strange. Oh, yeah. Chachi says, my friend was in a period of psychosis and was telling me she wished I was dead and a million other horrible things. She was purposely not taking her meds. That sucks. Yeah, well, same. Like my friend would refuse their meds and we would have to find like creative ways to get them to take their meds. But to be fair, they think they're being poisoned. Like my friend thought they were being poisoned. They thought we were trying to kill them which to be fair is reasonable and rational when you think your psychosis is the truth. So it was one of those things where it was very frustrating, but also like I get it. And now, of course, they're better now and, you know, a functional part of society. Um, so if you guys are just tuning in, my friend who actually had weed-induced psychosis is going to be on the podcast. And if you guys want to ask them questions or ask them about their experience, I'm writing down questions to ask them. We've already got a bunch of great ones. But we really want to give some advocacy to victims of weed-induced psychosis because even though we are big 420 people, we love weed. We also know that for some people, the combination of weed and their brain chemistry causes psychosis. And it's a devastating experience for the person undergoing psychosis. And I want to lend a lot of compassion considering the recent story of the woman who ended up killing um, a guy she was dating well under psychosis, right? So I just want to give a lot of compassion and open dialogue about this because I know people are going to get revenge focused. They're going to get cruel. I know humans are going to human. And so they're an animal of all species that's going to want to lash out. And I just want to give you guys an opportunity to pick compassion if possible. I know I'm asking a lot of people to do that. It's a lot to ask people to be compassionate. It's a huge ask, but I am asking it of people because as, as somebody who like loves somebody who underwent weed into psychosis, I, we're just so lucky that they didn't end up doing something like this. And it wasn't because the voices weren't telling them not to. It was because, um, as they say, they pussied out. <laughs> and they, they were almost too afraid to listen to the voices, which is really powerful in a lot of ways because it feels so real, you know? Discord says religion was started off crazy people undergoing psychosis. Well, I mean, maybe, right? We don't know that. Like, maybe, right? Like, we don't know that. Oh, I wonder if the man, the woman, I wonder if the man, the woman killed was experiencing psychosis as well. I mean, probably not. It's really rare to experience weed induced psychosis, which is also why we shouldn't make it illegal just because it happens to some people. He probably wasn't experiencing it. But I wonder because even on weed, like he couldn't defend himself. Ooh, I wonder, did he fight back? Was he able to defend himself? She stabbed herself in the neck and then she stabbed a dog, the service dog. So now I wonder, was he, I don't know. I don't know what he was, I don't know what was happening to him. The story didn't tell us, or at least the story we saw, you know, Chrissy says, I thought my fam was going to kill me. Then I had to, then I had landed with aliens. Then I thought I was under FBI investigation. I'm still figuring out if it was weed induced psychosis or something. I mean, it sounds like it. That sounds like it, you know, you know. If your family has a history of schizophrenia, stay away from weed and hallucinogens. You know what's interesting, though, is like in a world where people aren't talking about their mental health, how do you even know that your family's history? Since a lot of people think that stuff is very private. You know what I mean? Do we know what the service dog was for? Actually, let me double check that I heard that right, that it was a service dog. It might have just been a normal dog. Hold on. Let me double check. If it was a service dog, because I don't want to misspread misinformation here. 
Oh, no, it was just her dog. I thought I heard it was a service dog. Maybe I misheard. It just says her dog. So so she stabbed him, then stabbed herself, and then stabbed her dog. Okay. Now, she took, it was his weed. So he gave her the weed, which even sucks even more because if he didn't give her the weed that night, he wouldn't be dead. Not to blame him. I don't blame her or him. But that's what I'm saying. We have two victims in this story. A guy says, hey, you want to hang out with me? I'm into you. Girl goes, yeah, I would love that. They go over for a normal date night, two weeks into their relationship, very new dating relationship. Okay. He goes, hey, you want to hit my bong? She goes, yeah, for sure. Hits his bong. Boom. Fucking weed induced psychosis. That's insane, bro. That's insane. This is the expert conducted what prosecutors characterized as tests that showed she was not exaggerating or faking her behavior that day. Prosecutors opted to reduce the charge to involuntary manslaughter with a series of enhancements. The decision came after psychologist or psychologist Chris Manhandi, a consultant for law enforcement, examined her. Her interviews with law enforcement and police body cam footage produced a 37-page report that concluded she had lost touch with reality due to highly potent marijuana. After four hours of deliberation, a jury in December found her guilty of involuntary manslaughter, a charge that can carry a four-year prison sentence. Ventura County Superior Court Judge David Worley, however, opted to sentence her to 100 hours of community service in its form of educating others on marijuana and do psychosis. Hey, that's fucking based, bro. And two years of formal prohibition. We need more advocacy in regards to this. We really do. This is from the LA Times. And at the same time, I want you guys to understand, like, there were two victims in this story. There were two. There were three if you count the dog, and I think we probably should, right? They were dating a couple of weeks when she went to the apartment. Shortly after taking a second hit from a bong, she began hearing and seeing things that weren't there and believing she was uh, dead and that she had to stab O'Malley, Omelia in order to bring herself back to life. Sounds about right. And her closing statement, she said, I wish I could go back in time and prevent this tragedy from happening. I mean, I'm sure the guy who died also wished he didn't smoke weed that night, bro. If that's what I'm saying. It could happen to anyone in the right, like, you just think you're taking a hit from a bong. Everything is chill. And then bam, you're in this situation, right? It's horrible. It's just like the worst thing ever. Here, I'll, if you guys want to read this article yourself, just fucking devastating, bro. Just fucking devastating. I'm so devastated. I just, it makes me want to cry for humanity. It just sucks. It's so sad. It's just so sad. You know? Um, okay. Thank you for the questions for my friend who also underwent in weed induced psychosis. If you guys are just tuning in, I'm going to have my friend on my podcast. It was a huge life changing experience for me as the friend and for them as the victim of undergoing weed induced psychosis. If you guys are interested in learning about my friend's story, they're very interesting. Their family's really, you know, was really there for them. I really believe without their family, their community, their work being lenient or at least understanding that they were going through it I really think my friend could have ended up in a worse situation than they did and I just want to give a shout out and uh give you guys some spoons and being like aware of how this could happen to any of us and we're really lucky that it doesn't happen to us but when it does like there is a way out of it you're not you know there is help you can get doctors are becoming more aware of the fact that you can undergo weed and do psychosis I, I just really want to, I don't know, I don't know. I'm not much of an activist anymore, but I just want to give a sort of a activist-ish energy into this, you know? I just, I feel like there were really three victims in this story. And I, I really think the judge was incredibly self-aware and incredibly compassionate in their um, their verdict. I think everybody was very compassionate in giving her probation and community service to to spread awareness about this. It's real, Weed induced psychosis is real, you know. Um, baby says, uh, I wonder if there are any genetic markers for a predisposition to weed induced psychosis. I think they're doing research on it, but I would love to hear more about it. You know, <laughs> it is one of those things, you know. This is also why I would never uh, give a dab to someone who doesn't smoke or hasn't smoked before. You know, it's a question. I've hit a dab. I've hit a joint. I've hit a bong. I've had an edible. I've done so many different weed activities and I just, you know, now to be fair, what do you guys think about trip sitters? You know, what do you think about that becoming more culturally, uh, 
regular because with shrooms, with LSD, with all those other drugs, with DMT, I've always had a trip sitter. But with weed, there was like, what do you guys think about trip sitters? When I first smoked weed, I had friends with me. Um, but I've smoked weed a lot by myself. I know a lot of people who do a lot of drugs alone. I think they should be able to do that. But I would love to normalize trip sitters for our first times. Now, I don't know if this was her first time smoking weed, but it is one of those things. Okay, great questions, guys. I see you giving more questions for my friend, writing them down, writing them down. Um, weed induced psychosis is more likely to people with a certain genetic predisposition. What is that predisposition? I wonder if my friend can get tested to see if they have it. I would love to see if they could they could check that out. You know, Tara says this is such an important topic to talk about. Thank you for uh for to you all who are talking about it. I mean, honestly, I think it is like it has so much social stigma, so there's a lot of you know concerns about that. But I really do think um. It needs to be talked about. We need to advocate for people, you know? Evelyn says, I'm curious, the rates of weed-induced psychosis in women compared to men? Well, Joe Rogan has a male friend who underwent weed uh, weed psychosis, weed-induced psychosis. So I heard it. So after my friend, it happened to my friend, I looked it up. I found the Joe Rogan podcast. I found Philip DeFranco finally talked about it recently, actually in the last few months. I found a bunch of people talking about it, but I also found a lot of people getting upset about it because it lends to the stigma of weed, which conservatives have often used um, to deny people pain relieving medication. Look, as a chronically ill person, I haven't had weed since May of 2023 because I live in a foreign country now. I live in Europe and I didn't want to possibly uh, anger government bodies, obviously. So I am not partaking in it and my sleep is worse. My pain is worse. My fibro is worse. But at the same time, you know what I mean? Mick says, Brittany, what is your opinion of weed? I love weed. I think weed is an amazing plant given to us by the earth. And I think it has so many amazing, um, amazing tools associated with it. I really believe in its pain relieving, um, you know, pain relieving tools. I believe in its, its, its meditation tools. I believe it's a great mind expander, but I also think it, for some people might not be a great, a great thing. You know what I mean? So I think we have to be open to it not working out for everybody and then being okay with that. Now, I'm not saying if you have weed-induced psychosis, you should never try weed again. I think that's the wrong way to look at it as well. It's more like, you know, if you're going to do it again, do it with a trip sitter. Do it with somebody who can help you. But also, are you really, really, are you really willing to risk your mental health? You know, when I tripped on shrooms before I came to Europe, it was a big trip for me. And I really left the planet for a while. I would come in and out. It was like in and out waves. And I remember thinking to myself like, okay, I can't get trapped in this. And since my friend had already undergone psychosis, I had a realization of like, okay, they felt like this, but times like a hundred and didn't know it was fake. I knew going into my shroom trip, it wasn't real. So every time it felt too real, I would tell myself, girl, you're on shrooms and you chose this and it's doing exactly what drugs do. You're fine. So my friend said, um, I'll give a little bit of a tidbit before I do the podcast. They said that when they were in the psychosis, it did help to hear like you're just in a bad trip. And same, when I was on shrooms, I reminded myself like you took drugs, girl, you're fine. But there were moments where my brain was convinced it was real life. And I was seeing like Aztec gods and like centipede gods. And they were like asking me to come with them. So I was like, okay, hold on. Hold on. I got this. Okay, I got this. Like... I got this. I'm okay. Look, it's drugs. But if you are not expecting it, then the voices and the psychosis and a bad trip, a heavy trip outside of psychosis, like a normal fucking heavy trip, you might think is real. And so you got it. You know, most people like this girl had no idea this was possible. Most people don't think it's possible to have weed induced psychosis. So you know what I mean? It is so it's so it's so much more nuanced, you know, Oh, uh, you know, Judy says, I know two men who got weed induced psychosis. It was devastating to both their lives. Yeah. Devastating, bro. So, it, you know, I don't blame people for being sober. I don't blame people for staying away from it. I also don't blame people for taking a chance on it because it's probably not going to happen to you. But if it does. But if it does, you know. You know, if it does. Wait, what do you, what's this? Biza, Brittany, right, Biza, Brittany was talking about meditation, psychosis. What's, what do you mean? 
a lot of things can induce psychosis. Oh yeah, like meditation can induce psychosis. Meditation. Going into, we talked about spiritual psychosis the other day. Meditating, getting in tune with nature, getting in tune with a God can lead to psychosis. So before all the Christian loving Bible thumping people get freaked out over weed, let's pay attention to how many of you are under spiritual psychosis right now and you don't even know it. Vomiting in churches and sweating out and speaking in tongues. How many of you are in psychosis? You think you're hearing the voice of God literally in your head? Are you sure you're not mentally ill, bro? Now, obviously, a lot of people, when they say they are hearing God's voice in their head, they don't literally mean God's voice. But if you are hearing voices in your head that aren't part of your normal internal dialogue, you should probably go to a doctor. But so many people in religious communities do not go to doctors because they think they are spiritually connected to the Savior. And I think there's something that we need to talk, like that's something we need to talk about as well. Are you right? Oh, oh my gosh. It's just so devastating, bro. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Like I always think every trip is a good trip, even bad trips, but I've never undergone psychosis. So obviously when I'm thinking of a bad trip, I'm thinking of something I can rationalize through and tell myself like you're in a bad trip. It'll be over in a few hours, dude. But I don't think I'm ready to do it again. I think after going through my last room trip, after my friend's psychosis, I think it's not that I'll never do drugs again. That's not what I'm saying. But I do think that I'll be much more unlikely to do heavy doses of it just because I'm I'm so secure in reality and I just don't want to lose grip with it. And God forbid, what if I do have a bad chemistry day and all of a sudden I'm fucking, you know what I mean? Because this spiritual psychosis is real. It happened to a friend's brother-in-law and it's super frightening. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's it's amazing, the mind. The mind is just like an amazing place. And I just, again, I just want to give a lot of compassion and, you know, a lot of just warning to people to remember like this could happen to anyone, you know, anyone, you know, because you just don't smoke weed thinking it's going to happen. You know, you just don't think about it, you know. You just don't think about it. Thompson, I'm going to write down that question for my friend as well. But you said, how would you, how would you, how would we compare someone who gets paranoid when they smoke weed versus someone who gets paranoid and induced psychosis? Okay. I've gone paranoid on weed times it, but like a thousand and you're seeing things and you're hearing things and you're 100% feel like it's real because weed induced psycho, like, um, paranoid weed paranoia is so casual to me. Like I feel it I'm like, oh my God. But imagine it. I imagine my friend's psychosis was probably like times a thousand. I'm assuming my friend's psychosis was like weed paranoid, but times like a thousand. Because there's no, I, you know, you're hearing and seeing things. And the voices, like, they're so clear. Like it's, it's a voice. And you're being told to like hurt people or hurt yourself. So I'm assuming that... It's like weed paranoia, but times a thousand. That's what I'm assuming. Does anybody have any like personal example they want to give? But I'll ask my friend that question as well, because obviously they were smoking weed before that. But that's what I would assume is happening because I've been paranoid a lot on weed, but I've I've always like it's nothing compared to what my friend described about or what I saw happen to my friend, you know, um, Uncomfy says a lot of people don't do research before doing psychs. Um, so, uh, a lot of people shouldn't do shrooms if you have a bad mental state. Well, but that science says otherwise. The science says shrooms can actually cure possibly PTSD, which you could argue is a bad mental state. So there, the science says that in an, a regulated, proper situation, shrooms and psychedelics can heal mental health. So, you know, that's the difference is like, are you doing it in a, in a, a good situation? Are you doing it with thoughtfulness in mind? Are you thinking about but that's the thing. We don't always have access to that information, right? That's back in the day, doctors would get their licenses revoked for mentioning shrooms. And now we're experimenting in places like Portland. So, you know, we're moving into a new era of the world. But of course, humans are very like frightful. They're very like fearful creatures. They've evolved over time to be fearful, which I think fear is the root of all evil for this reason, because your fear will make you do very um, cruel things to one another out of fear. 
I'm afraid of you, so I'll kill you first so you don't hurt me, even though you gave no indication you would. I hate this group of people because their beliefs tell me I should be afraid of them. Oh my gosh, drugs did this to one person out of a million. We should ban this drug and kill everyone or prison everyone or make everyone ostracize anyone who's involved in this drug. Human beings are not nuanced creatures by nature. We have to train ourselves to be nuanced. Thank you, Hada, for another question. Chrissy says, for me, it was like the most intense paranoia I've ever had. Mm-hmm. I believe it. I believe it. Yeah. Beza says, more education to harm reduce. Yes, ma'am. Shrooms and weed are drugs. People should tr try to learn about it and harm reduce when possible. Everything we do should be about harm reduction. Religion, culture, expectation. But we don't talk about it that way because the world is so fucking confident and the world is so sure that it knows what's objectively correct for 8 billion people. It has the audacity to, um, you know, redu reduce us into these like very simple like little boxes, which is so ironic when people are upset about my level system because it quote unquote re like re is reductionary or like it reduces people down to categories as if like we're not doing that all the time. I just made it simple because it's too nuanced and complicated not to do it that way. But I guess that's why everyone does everything. We generalize because it's easier and more reasonable, but also the people who fall through the cracks, like I guess we just don't care about them. We have a homeless crisis for a reason. That is a mental health crisis. It is a mental health crisis, the homeless issue. And we're just watching it happen. So when you ask yourself, why, like, why do bad things happen and why do people just tolerate it? Because it is very overwhelming to save the world. And it is nuanced and incredibly, like that's what I'm saying. My friend was so lucky. Their friends and family and job and doctors were available to them. They had the resources. It's as simple as that. They had the right resources with an educated family that could make educated decisions about their mental health. What if your family doesn't have the education, doesn't have the resources? You don't even talk to your family. You're alone. You're alone in an apartment. Bada bing, bada boom. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You know, you're going to suffer. You're going to suffer probably more than the average person could even imagine suffering. The average person, if you haven't gone through psychosis, have, has probably not even suffered half of what this person has suffered. As somebody who's witnessed psychosis, it is a suffering I would not wish on anybody. I would not wish, I would not wish psychosis on anyone. I would wish something more temporary and physical on you than I would wish psychosis on you. Absolutely not. Baby says exactly nobody earns homelessness and radical take, but I think every single person should be house fed and treated as needed worldwide. I mean... I honestly think a stronger take. I think everybody should be fucking snipped. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I really think like, I really think that everybody should do what they're going to do. That's the problem is like you got to give people freedom to be chaotic, but people are going to end up suffering because like if you really wanted to reduce harm, you would also prevent people from having kids, but you can't prevent people from having kids, nor can you prevent people from being able to make decisions about their own mental health or stability. It's really difficult. It's a very nuanced subject. Baby says, plus, uh, most people place distance between them and someone in psychosis, but you are more similar to someone in crisis than you are to Jeff Bezos. So, so true. Yeah, so true. You know, and that's the thing too. Again, if you don't have a community that knows you, so when you act out of turn, they're actually concerned for you. I think that's a part of it. Like when my friends act weird, I'm like, hey, something's going on. You should go to therapy. When other people's friends act weird, I think they just dismiss them as being like cranky or whatever. But like, I know something is wrong. Like you can't just start acting differently than normal. You can't start being inappropriate out of normal. You can't start just like crossing people's boundaries out of nowhere. Like that's not your personality. So if your personality is completely shifted, your friends and family, someone should notice and somebody should say like, hey, you're acting very different. Like my friend wasn't just like, somewhat different they were very different now to be fair it was a slow burn it didn't it was like they were kind of acting funny kind of acting funny and then boom too much I was like oh something's really off now I got I gotta I gotta call your family I gotta see what's up like what's going on I'm confused same with like I've had friends I've had family I've had people in my life I've had I've had lots of people in like working situations you work at a grocery store you meet a lot of people their guy I worked at a grocery store where a man literally unalived himself in the back room because he was going through a messy divorce. People are going through shit. And you don't know until the day something goes terribly wrong. 
because he had no one to turn to, no one to talk to, and the people seeing him going through a divorce didn't even process it. Unalived himself at our grocery store, the one I worked at, in the back room. This was before I came in. I had come into work like six months or a year after this, but it was a story in the story that everybody would tell, you know? You just never know. You just never know what people are going through, you know? Or, oh my God, I saw the most, I was crying. I saw the most devastating TikTok about a woman who lost her whole family in a tornado and she was right there holding onto her family's bodies and she's the only one who survived. Devastating story. Just an absolutely devastating story. And you're sitting there and you're like, fuck, some people have really fucking gone through it, bro. Some people have really fucking gone through it. It's devastating. It makes, it makes my life look easy. It does. Like when I think about my borderline and my unaliving tendencies, they were nothing compared to my friend's psychosis. Nothing compared to this woman li- losing her family in a tornado. Nothing compared to a man who's so devastated by his divorce, he thinks he needs to unalive himself. My problems are not that big. Those are big problems. Like they're big problems to me because like I'm the one going through the perception, but they're not compared to other people like the biggest problems. They're just big because they're happening to us, which is also fair. I don't mean to diminish my struggles or your struggles. They're big, they're big struggles. But man, you really tend to be grateful when you realize like, oh shit, okay. Uh, Thank God I have borderline and I didn't have psychosis. But also like I had access to therapy. I could spend thousands of dollars on it. I had an education understanding of mental health. Like I had, I was able to do that. So in other ways, like I also had a different kind of like relationship with my borderline. I also got really lucky in that sense. Destination says my father-in-law had something going on just a week ago, but I noticed things changing over a year. Diet changes, watching different radical things. Yep. Buying strange things. Yep. People really going at for going through it, you know? Tiger says Janae McCurdy's ex-boyfriend had a weak weed slash spiritual psychosis. She writes about it in her book. It sounds terrible to go through. It is. It's just the worst, bro. Shadow Boxer says people go through pain and you're right. You never know. You just never fucking know, bro. Which is why, again, I really do think people overall are good. They're well-intentioned, but they're going through it. We're an evolved species on a planet and we don't know what we're doing here and we're just going through it. And so we create reasons. We come up with assumptions. We make very strong guesses about what we're doing here, but ultimately we're existing. And that relationship with existing and existence is going to be full of conflict and suffering, which is why you need to suffer with wisdom so you can seek out joy. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, dun, dun.